Now there are seven keys to divine health. Some I'll spend more time, some I'll spend less time. One, water, which will be just cleansing and detoxifying. You have sleep and rest. If you sleep and don't rest, then you also don't get enough sleep. <laughs> it's true, you know? People who, who, who are lying down, they're tossing here and there, that means they are not resting, okay? Then you have nutrition. Nutrition are living food. That means you eat the food as it is. Not too much cooking, not too much processing. Now, when you have too much processing, you destroy a lot of chemicals and then you extend the shelf life. It's not good. Then we have exercise and oxygen. Now, I don't do a lot of exercise, but you notice I keep slim because I learned how to dance a lot. I, I, I like to move a bit. Whenever I sweat, after an hour, I'll get up, I'll get a drink, I'll move myself, move my body. You must do that. They discover people are dying from sitting down too much. Okay? Because when you sit down, you slouch, you're pressing your, 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 your body in, and you're pressing against all your organs, so your organs cannot function properly, you don't get enough air. So your lungs become um, half functioning, you know, not get up too bad, so you don't get enough oxygen. Proper nerve supply. Some of us overdo ourselves, that's why you get repetitive strain injury, so nerves cannot pass messages, you get swelling, all that, or you get trigger finger, you will be praying for such people. And detoxification means you must cleanse yourself up. Physically, as well as spiritually, we need to do regular cleansing and spiritual balance. Just like the atmosphere has a cycle, you know, God is a God of principle. Everything He do in the whole universe, there are cycle, seasons. So has our body. So we must learn to know what seasons to be in. Now there are seven keys. So I want to push the first, the last key up here: the spiritual balance. We must a daily dose of God's word. What word I do with you? Don't just read a uh, daily bread. Just read that verse and think about that verse so they become part of you. That's why my Bible, I remember a scripture. So that I never memorize, I think about it, chew it up. Prayer, that means we are praying all the time. Lord, what are you saying? Now, just somewhere I was sitting, God said to, to speak to you uh, 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 a prophecy that was released by Jerry Savell. Who knows Dr. Jerry Savell? Now I want to read this, huh? uh, maybe I can later WhatsApp you the, the, and then you can forward it, uh, what God is going to do. Your mind is to do with the soul part. Praying ties to do with your spirit and God's spirit having communion. It's very, very powerful. Now, when because we pray in tongues a lot, when we went to Pakistan, we had no problem. We had police escort us from the gate of the village to where we were preaching and they guard us and then bring us back safely. And we just know when our places we go and learn to be very sensitive, yeah? Uh, you learn to relax and soak in God's presence. Sometimes we don't know what to do about anything. Just put on a worship music and so that God, I'm going to just soak in your presence. Come and speak to me, show me what to do. Lord, I just want to be a child in your arms. Do that. Soak in. And, and that's how God gave me this dream about this man. I just say, Lord, I'm going to soak in. You speak to me concerning this man's leukemia. Mm -hmm. you know, this week, he came out of hospital after just over one week. He came out. After a few days rest, he went to work for four hours. Last week, uh, this uh, is Saturday. Oh, this week just gone. He has been working up to a full day. And his energies come back. And the doctor say it's dropped so much. You know, from 10,000 to 290,000 to 89,000. It's dropped very low now. And the doctor say, uh, you don't need to take chemo for a week and we'll see what happens. Because they're trying to put it on a new program. And I say, this new program, you have no peace, I have no peace, don't do it. Yeah. So, then worship, see, ministering to God, 
And then fathers, you're supposed to set up a family altar of worship and prayer. It's very important. Now, when, when mothers are very powerful, fathers are not doing their job. Children will grow up with dysfunction. Mm -hmm. I am counseling such children everywhere in the world. Okay? I'm counseling pastors who know where to go because they're pastors. They're too embarrassed. And God gave a word and I speak to them and say, Yes, yes, pastor, what do I do? So we are having this. Fathers must take the road. We must walk in love and forgiveness. Regular reflection on Thanksgiving. I find that people are very thankful, not just get healed, but they walk into recovery. Now, two years ago, I had a, a big pocket of my bag, my wallet, over a thousand Singapore dollars. They were different currency. And I prayed, and God gave me uh, Proverbs 6, 30, 31. I claimed that for seven, four return. Within December to January, I had nearly 8,000 return. Then I discovered I lost a chain that belongs to my father. It was given to me. That's the only thing I have my dad. So I told God, God, I surrender you. I didn't tell anybody. I tip out my bag, I look everywhere, you cannot find it. Last week only, ten days ago, I was in JV and uh, I told the Lord, my bag is still here, I'm going to give it away. And the Lord said, will you tip it out? Because at a camp, this prophet said, I mean, you've always asked God for things. And the father said, ask again and I'll give it to you. So I said, Lord, I want that chain back. I tip out the bag, there was the chain. I don't know how it happened in this man. And something else came up, something else. One thing more I got is restored. So this is the year God's going to do a lot of breakthrough. Regularly get inner healing to detox yourself. I conduct inner healing camp and we saw people like change. And you must be open. If you're not open, try to understand it will not work. You have to say, Lord, I don't know, understand everything. I just give you myself. You reveal to me what needs cleaning up and God will do it. Then regular house cleansing in your own house. It's very, very important. So this is only picture form of what you have to do. You need to walk to forgive one another. You have to give, hug people. That 20 second hug can impart security to one another. But if there's a male figure, don't hug too long. <laughs> because wrong things will come up. Uh, and a good relationship is not to accept people, hugs. You support their present, you encourage your future. Because that's what real friendship is going to be like. Forgiveness is the key to a lot of answered prayer. And forgiveness is so the key to healing. If you have not forgiven, the Bible says in Matthew 15, 34, 35, he said the king was so angry, he sent this man who couldn't forgive. He was forgiven a lot, he didn't forgive the one who posted no. Put it into jail, he said the tormentors will torment you till you pay up. So if there's sickness that cannot heal, it's usually because they have deep unforgiveness. You've been prayed for and everything. I dealt with that. I spoke to this man as well, and he started to cry and start to ask God to solve and change in his life. So house cleansing, you physically clean your house, you must also spiritually clean your house. Clean out things that shouldn't be there. Water is very important. Why? Because 85% of your brain is water. It helps carry nutrient oxygen to your cells. It, it, it causes the oxygen to be more available for your breathing. It makes out 83% of your blood. It removes your waste. It regulates your body temperature. Do you know if you feel cold, it's because you don't have enough water too. If you have a headache, you don't have enough water. If you drink plenty of water, your headache will go. Guaranteed. Your bones are 22% water. I notice when I don't drink enough water that is suitable, I also get aching bones. So I know I better go squeeze some lemon juice into the water. Maybe it's too acidic. So when you squeeze the lemon juice in the water, make it alkaline and it'll help you. And it cushion your joints. That means your, your joint won't crack, crack. Huh? I used to have crack, crack now no more. Because of kidney trouble and a lot of cracking needs. And it protects your cushion of your vital organ. I don't have any aches and pain. It helps your body absorb nutrients and it makes up 75% of your muscles. Very interesting, yeah? Five advantage of drinking water. First thing in the morning, you drink water, it will help your lymphatic system. Because in the night, your body is doing all the cleaning. So you must help to balance your body and help you fight infection. That's why I don't get sickness. Never have sickness. Very rare. It's rare it's usually it's because something is going wrong in your food. You have the skin to be very healthy. Somebody came up to me and said, I want to bless you, uh, I want to ask you to use this thing. I said, I don't need it. Why your skin so healthy? What what cream do you use? What do you do? I use soap and water only. Okay? So I drink a lot. Yeah? Help with the weight loss. I must drink a lot. Um, First thing in the morning, you must drink a lot. One big glass of water. 
and you go to the toilet. Very good. If you find that you, you don't like it, you squeeze a bit of lemon and a bit of raw honey inside, mix it and drink it. And then within less than half an hour, you can go to the toilet. Increased production of new blood and muscle cells. People like the man that I was talking about with leukemia, he don't drink enough. He helps people give water to people by not drinking up. That's wrong. Okay? <laughs> drinking water, empty stomach helps to clean out your colon, your intestine, so that you don't get colon cancer. Many people are not drinking enough. Drinking at the right time is also very important. You must drink. First thing you wake up, here they recommend two glasses of water because in the night I drink. I will drink, and if I go to the toilet, I'll drink immediately after going to the toilet. I will drink. I will make up because I have kidney failure before. And you should drink a glass of water 30 minutes before meal. If you drink too close, your digestive system may be too late during the digestion, so you have to drink much earlier. And drink before you have a shower because blood pressure goes up when you have a shower. I don't know whether you realize or not because you put hot water and some of you like to sink and do something. So your body, you know, the blood pressure goes up. And then before you go to bed, as you stop, you have a stroke or heart attack. I drink that. And I recommend people to take candle water because I've tested a lot of water. Because where I stay, this pastor was given so many machines. There's five different machines. I've tested all of them. And they don't make a difference much. Hardly any difference. I don't think the health-wise of a family it don't make much difference. Because candle water, they have different type of water. They have water, strong acidic for your cleaning, for disinfecting, for sanitizing, washing your vegetables. They got strong candle water, 11.5 for cleaning your room, remove pesticide in your food, which is good. Then healthy drinking water, which a range of 8.5 to 9.5. There's anti-aging and antioxidation effect. I drink that. The word antioxidation means your body don't have too much oxygen. When you have too much oxygen, your body rusts in the sense of metal. You rust, you age, you get cold. And then beauty water is you have a skin for shower and cleaning. And you have clean water for medicine taking. Because there are different levels of water. We all drink the same water thinking it works. It does not work, yeah? So I'm saying. Second, sleep and rest. It's very important. Are you resting enough? If you are not resting enough, the word of God says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. The word sweet sleep means to enter into a state of just resting in God and not worry about anything. That's why you have to be sweet. And then when the Lord said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Resting means God, I'm not going to struggle anymore. So when I lost the gold chain, I know it cannot be replaced. I don't struggle. I said, God, I give it to you. That means I rest in the Lord. I cast my care to God. And two, year, uh, two years later, I found that. Of God brought it through in you. There are different things that happen. We've been talking about this because of what happened in camp. It was worth given, I claim the word. You need to nap. Now, I, I have a habit of I sit in a car. Like yesterday, I, I'm traveling from Malaysia, Singapore because I live in Singapore now. And I travel in and uh, I, I told my friend, I said, just now the other taxis smell like it. I caught in the spirit, the realm. I said, I need to rest. So while I'm resting, I'm waking up. I want to deep rest, woke up as fresh as I did. And then half an hour, less than half an hour, I will boost four extra hours of alertness so I can do a lot more work. It helps release hormones, help children grow, help your body to control fat. If you don't have enough water, you also can have too much fat. People who don't drink enough water, they say they have water retention. Water retention has nothing to do with good water in your body. It's actually water trying to dilute the toxin in your body. You must understand this. So if you have a lot of that, you can drink a lot until all the toxins flush out. You study one day, your, your water retention is stopped. Doctors tell you to cut back this nonsense, okay? Because doctors don't understand nutrition, don't understand the human body. So what do that? It also helps your leptin. Leptin is a hormone in your body that determines your appetite and your weight loss. So you pray that your leptin will function as not way to function. That means you don't eat too much, you don't put on unnecessary weight. And you slow down your aging. Water helps you to get rid of a lot of things. Destroy viruses, bacteria, cancer cells. You think it's just water. Our water is so needed, just like the Bible. The Word of God is like water. We need it all the time. It improves your brain function. It causes you to be able to recognize things. You know, I'm 63, I'm studying. Uh, medical papers, 
people are reading how to understand a lot more about uh, the latest research, and God is going to be using it to his glory. Because God gave me a word of knowledge, I want to say, I do this, Lord. What is the scientific background? Because I stand before our doctors who check me out. They found that what I teach is very biblical as well as medically sound. So it's very important. It helps you to reduce cortisol. Now cortisol, uh, when you have too much stress, it will go up. And cortisol stops the way your brain functions. That's why you sometimes feel that uh, you're so stressed, you cannot think straight yet. Yeah? It's to do with the neurotransmitter being uh, affected. Then you become irritable, you depressed, you get anxiety and then you cannot sleep and so on. As a result, you can get sickness. So you don't have enough sleep, you can get uh, sickness, you can get weight gain, heart attack, stroke, you become a danger to other people as well yourself. Uh, you have diseases coming to your life. So get seven to eight hours sleep. I now get seven to eight hours. I don't insist. Sometimes I go to bed by one o'clock because I have some things I have to do and I get up at six o'clock. Or before the alarm is, uh, uh, is calling me, I will get up. Because the Holy Spirit will call us up when there's enough to learn to practice that. Third, living food. This is what I want, I want to teach you more. It's recognizable as a food. This is in a raw or close to raw state. So juicing is another form of living food. Living food means none of the vitamins, not minerals are destroyed. I don't eat any supplement in my household. I don't have a single one. As a people blessed, I give it away because I don't need it. I eat very real food. Genesis 1 for 9 30 says, I've given you every herb. The word herb means every plant bearing seed, and every tree which is the fruit of a tree bearing seed. To you shall be for food. So God intended to us to have food. He said in the end times, 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 and 3 and 4, he said, The Spirit expressly said, In the end times, some will depart from faith. Because why? People die, oh, you cannot eat this food, you cannot eat that food, this is our God. But you need to ask God. I don't eat mooncake now. The mooncake is do a lot of persons in it. It's carry demonic spirit. So when you eat it, it affects your, your life because you believe in it. The Bible says, what you believe, you trust it, you will become like that thing. It's very true. So every good thing, God, creation of God is good and nothing to be refused if you receive it, then it's giving. But if God tells you not to eat like me, God told me not to eat pork, I don't eat pork at all. I don't care what people tell me to quote scripture. I said that's what God tell me. And I refuse to take it. I have not been sick as a result. Proverbs 23, verse 20, 21 said, Do not join those who drink too much wine. Now that wine originally is alcohol. Or gosh themselves, meat, don't eat too much meat. That's why people are getting uric acid. I just prayed with somebody. He said, but pastor, you don't understand. My son is a, a, a businessman. He had to meet with so many crime, big company. They eat food all the time. Shut screen, huh? Because it's big up when it's looking at I tell you, you have to change your diet. You have to be bold enough to change your diet when you're eating like this. The other days you eat other things more healthy, so your body comes into balance. Don't be drunken or glutton. You see, eating too much meat, ravenous eater of meat, that means too much meat. You become poor and drowsy. Uh, drowsiness clothes them, that means it can affect your body very much. So when you have too much on this rich food, I call it, they're actually bad food. Bad food is because you have too much of it, it's bad for your body, the knowledge of food that you have too much. The world says you should eat more. Philippine people say you eat meat because you're rich. If you eat vegetable, you're poor. <laughs> poor man food. It's rubbish. I ate vegetable when I was there. Just one lady brought in right and asked me, one cabbage time before I eat a quarter of it. She was so shocked. She said, the pastor who invited me and said, nobody eats vegetable here. Mm -hmm. It's a big food. So let's not listen to the word. Bad food are very convenient, they are fast food. Eat occasionally, okay, but don't make it a habit of eating all the time. It can upset your blood sugar, it can upset your hormone, and it's very bad. Chocolate raises the dopamine, make it more hyperactive, unless you're eating dark chocolate. Bad foods give you comfort. It gives you a false comfort, okay? Only when you eat healthy in the long run, it will give you it will help your body. So false comfort always what? Increase your craving because it's sweet, it's creamy, it's stuck, it's salty. And it affects your serotonin. Now serotonin you have to feel good. But when you mess it up, you have too much of it too. That's why children become ADHD. Attentive, hyper, um, 
deficient, um, anti deficient hyperactive uh, children. Uh, so don't go there. MSG, waiting, uh, don't get involved with it. If you are taking food that got a lot of waiting, drink a lot, must drink a lot of lime in it. Don't go and drink coke. Somebody recommend coke. But coke is very bad. I've not put a picture of coke. Coke is very bad. Now, these are good vegetables you should eat for prevention of breast cancer. That's very common. Now, I'm telling you the physical, but I'm not telling the spiritual. If you have unforgiveness for work towards women and people, woman figure that you know, your close relatives, women, it's always breast, left breast. Right breast is always the male authority or someone you don't know. You have a lot of unforgiveness. You have a lot of ministered to so many who have killed because they recognize that you can. And it literally dried up. In one case, the whole breast exploded and worms came out. Cancer had worms. Breast cancer eat broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, spinach, collards, you know, tomatoes, kale, cabbage, carrots. Um, these are cancer fighting food. Now try to eat variety. I tell my students, why I buy a bag of salad? Because there are 12 to 20 varieties. I wash it, I it says, you know. I need to wash it, but uh, I can wash it anyway. And then I'll eat it and mix it. Because you need to eat variety. Coconut, we used to take coconut, now we don't take coconut. Coconut is very good for immune system. I take coconut, I buy coconut sometimes because they don't buy coconut milk here. In England, I can. I just come back from England in October. Mm -hmm. I drink coconut milk every day. I don't go on weight. Okay? I lost weight. And I take the coconut sometimes, I put it into my cereal, I mix it. A bit of cold water to dilute it down. You know, oh, can it cholesterol is only when you cook it very high temperature, okay? It does not have high cholesterol. It's a little tin thing. You must understand how you eat things. And uh, coconut is very good in many ways. I have a proof. I don't eat any mess. I take all this. Cinnamon. You take a stick about it, uh, like that. You boil for 15 minutes in one liter water. Take it out. Dry it, next day use it again, use it twice, and the third time put in your curry. Because it's not so strong, so put in your curry. Because curry put longer, yeah? So whatever leftover oils will come out. Then, you must then learn to detox. Now, this is a very good detox for those who want to get rid of stubborn belly fat. I do this every now and then. I do it for my, this uh, leukemia guy. He makes uh, celery. Now, celery brings the blood, uh, blood pressure down. Then you put kale, there's anti cancer, lemon, ginger. They are both uh, alkaline and turmeric. Turmeric is to stop pain uh, in your body and the cayenne pepper to flavor it up. Okay? And then actually it's on my Facebook, you know, go to my Facebook, I, I do this every now and then I teach people go have this <coughs> use it. Then if you have fat in your blood, you know some people have fat in their blood, yeah? Because they either don't have gallbladder, so the fat is in the blood. We put in lemon, garlic, and water. A lot of garlic. Garlic is very good for your heart, very good for your blood. And if you can, take apple cider vinegar, which is very good if you have diarrhea in that, uh, because it will stop your diarrhea and give you uh, probiotics in your body. Vinegar is a fermented thing, so you have probiotics. And you have stuffy nose, take it because it drains your sinus. And I tell people if we really drain, and for some reason because we react to act on, we just command the sinus to open up and drain all impurity and stop running. That's what I did the other day. I took a detox and it ran on stop because I don't need it. I just taste it for my friend to see it's okay. I taste only a sip, you know, while I'm running all day. And I to command my body to stop so that I can go out and miss any stop. Soft throat. It's very good to have uh, apple cider vinegar. Now, people don't like apple cider vinegar, they use lemon juice and uh, honey. Actually, it's a, a, a changing of taste buds. Then it helps your muscles to relax. Night time, huh? you, you drink it, and it actually helps your leg cramp. If you are leg cramp, take honey with apple cider. It's very good for toothpaste. I don't use Colgate anymore because I'm vomiting every time because I pray as a God. If there's anything that's not good for me, you tell me. So I find that certain things I take, I want to keep warm it, I will keep it. So I learned to listen to my body. Now I brought this, pass it around, 
Now, I, do, I heard that last time I prayed for some people. Just now when I was standing, some people, you get up, you stand too long, or you get up at the night, your feet hurts. These are all signs that your body are building up crystals in your joint. And when that happens, you have pretty neck. Knee and then you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement. Take this plant, three leaf a day raw. This before I came here, this breakfast we had mee siam and the, we had this leaf wash because I grew in my garden in our garden in every year. And then three leaf a day, we take it and now they don't complain eggs and things. You call it pagaga, no? Yeah. Pagaga. Oh. Okay, thank you, Gaga. Okay, I'll correct it. And it's very good. You take it for three months, your joint pain is all good. You don't need to buy it. uh, glucosomates. It's a, a scam, that one. It's a waste of money. Yeah. One of my church members just bought the husband said, you ask faster. <laughs> I told him, waste money. If you spend 200 something for one month's supply, you don't go with the money. Then, anti inflammatory. Use pineapple, ginger, and, and uh, smoothie. It's very, very nice. The other day I just got a, a pineapple, half a pineapple each person. We just squeeze it, we just put a bit of garlic and the, and the ginger. Wow, I squeeze it. Also, I want to put lemon with it. You put lemon and say, wow, this is really, really good. Now, the coconut water is to help your body restore itself very fast. If you have dehydration, diarrhea, vomiting, pine, uh, coconut water is the best thing to drink. You know, in the hospital, if you drink, then actually the coconut water is better than the drink. It's the same thing, same thing, except that one is chemical and this one is natural. Yeah? Very teaching. Now, inflammation, what do you mean by inflammation? Whenever we are sick, our organs, our mucus lining, our cells become inflamed. That means it says, I cannot take this poison. It's trying to get rid of poison, so it inflamed. Chinese say, fat to fat. So I'm learning also. So you, you do uh, pumpkin, carrots, uh, apples, turmeric. Turmeric is the yellow ginger powder. And then you put some cinnamon powder and, and, and just uh, juice it and drink it. It's very good. I, I do juicy. I do juicy for anybody who's sick because I find that it's the quickest way to bring healing. And then for gout, gout you put carrot, parsley, cabbage and ginger. Now ginger is very good. Many people do not know. I had a lady who had um, a cold in the leg that never healed because she had diabetes. So we pound ginger and pound rice together, bind it on the wound. Every day she do it, it took away the smell after 48 hours and the whole stuff drain all the poison and one day totally cured. Five months later she was totally cured. And then a year later the doctor said no more diabetes. I don't want her. That's a miracle of just using your home remedies, okay? So if you have all this, choose yourself. I mean, it takes a few uh, minutes. Actually, it don't take long. I, I, I do it. The other day, one of my students timing me, you know, how long it takes. While she's having a shower, and doing all the juicing, all the breakfast, everything. She said, oh, so fast. It's not take much time. Coals. Garlic tea. Uh, Epsom salt. You soak in Epsom salt. Lavender oil. Uh, Netty is uh, it's, uh, a nettle, elderberry syrup, inertia, uh, probiotics, fermented food, Chinese. Uh, you know, Korean don't fall sick very regularly. That's the ear of kimchi, yeah? That's very good. Okay, it's anti cancer. I was in Korea in May, last May, and I found that the people are so healthy and they don't take table salt. Do not buy table salt, throw it out. We use sea salt or Himalayan salt. I brought some Himalayan salt, it's pink color. But the color will just go, oh, it's because we have so it's changing color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very good. It's uh, cave salt. Himalayan salt is actually from the cave, from the rocks. And uh, it will change the way you eat. Then the different type of oil. Now, the oil that you buy in the shop, most of them are very poisonous. Don't buy palm oil. Don't buy canola oil. All these are bad oil. I buy what we call, I forgot to take a food drug. Rice bread, R I C B R A N. The rice, the shell of the rice, uh, the, 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 the husk. That's the oil, that is the food for frying things, if you like frying things. Because that one can take very high temperature and doesn't change bad very fast. 
They don't change the trans fat. Most other oil change the trans fat. And um, then you have coconut and macadamia, shea butter, uh, wheat germ oil, carrot seed oil, avocado oil, olive oil, almond oil. Now, avocado is good fat. If you don't eat a lot of fat meat, eat avocado. You need fat for your brain. If you don't have enough fat for your brain, you have a problem. Okay? Your brain needs that to function. Now, Moringa, this is the one. I, I have not put a lot more picture. It's anti inflammatory, anti cholesterol, antioxidant. Yes. yes. Uh, this is from my garden. I grow quite a few trees from the forest. It's an appetizer suppressor, that means you don't eat too much. You actually eat just enough. Whoever wants this bunch can go home and make soup and stir, you know, eat it up. Um, it is um, it is improve digestion, improve your wound healing. It's anti tumor, anti fungal. Uh, ladies who have itchiness, has to do with fungal, so you pick that. Uh, reduce wrinkle and your age lines. It enhances your skin. It increases energy, uh, energy. It improves your vision, your eyesight. It normalizes your blood sugar. It's antidepressant and it strengthens the immune system. So in Sarawak, I found they call it the hundred and one medicinal use. By they call me. They told me. Because I told them, oh, they said we know this plant, we call it 101 uses. But in England, we call it the miracle tree. Because it was given by a Christian scientist. He says that when they discover this, they are increasing people to use it. So, as close as you can, you take it. So, for my salad, I just. Yeah, the salad, we have ordinary salad. And what I do is. Um, I have uh, garlic, I chop up garlic, I put olive oil, uh, I put perilla oil, depending what oil you use, it doesn't matter. And then I put raw honey, salt and pepper and lemon juice, that's all. And then all I have to do is shake it well. And then pour this, and you can eat, and this is... Now when you have honey, never use metal. It will destroy, it will change the chemistry of the honey and spoil it. Use wooden spoon or butter spoon. Okay, then you take it, you will find it's different. Okay? Uh, breakfast. Uh, garlic. Honey and garlic. Uh, honey, garlic, and lemon juice. Salt and pepper. Yeah? Breakfast. Try to eat a high um, breakfast. A uh, high, high um, protein breakfast. I eat raw oats, that's mine. Huh? At the bottom, I put down raw oats with milk seeds and mila. Mila is chia seeds, that's powerful. Can I talk uh, Too much is not nice, you have to try it. Yeah, shake it well. And then, um, in the evening, try to eat a meal that's. In the lunchtime, you eat more uh, carbo, more energy. Yeah? But lunchtime, try to eat something like uh, a high with um, try to pet that will make you sleep well. Uh, so that's some example. If you want, I can run. Okay, there are examples here. Yeah? Exercise. Now, don't overdo exercise. I have many friends who do exercise, they die. One of my friends was sharing her friend. Husband and wife always exercise. They keep fit every day. Yeah? They go running, they do all sorts of things. They are quite young. Couple uh, in the early 40s, they have two young children. The husband went off earlier, came back, she still had not finished her work, and was standing <laughs> next to me, heart attack, and dropped dead right in front of her. I tell you, she was so shocked, she never got over it. And she went to the other extreme. So, don't do exercise better. If you want to improve your muscles, yes, I carry backpack. And uh, when I go to the airport, I have to run, so I run a bit. So, I'll make sure I don't wear heels, I wear running shoes. So I do a lot of dancing, I like to dance a lot. So that helps. Swimming and running helps your heart. But don't do too much. Do 20 minutes. Don't go to the extreme of I want to have this muscle and don't go to the extreme. Yeah? And the best thing is for you who are older, use a rebounder. You don't go to rebounder, the go I can jump on it and it bounce. That helps the whole organ, whole body uh, whole body I mean. All the organs are body. Because it helps the repetitive system. So it helps in that way. And uh, when you're standing there, I don't know whether you, I, I do this habit. I will squeeze in, 
like this, squeezing your muscles when you're standing every now and again. You can do things and you can talk and do your housework, you squeeze it. And when you sit on a chair, you squeeze it every now and again and move your shoulders. Why do you think in the play they ask you to do your body movement and flex your feet? It's because you want the blood to flow. No blood stays stagnant. Because they're sitting too long. So I fly to the UK, it takes me 13 and a half hours. So I'll do exercise. Especially when you've got somebody sleeping and cannot get up. And you cannot climb over, you know. I, that happened once. I literally had to climb from one seat to another seat the next to others that help me. Because I'm desperate to go to the toilet. And, uh, so do that and do exercise so that when you're watching TV, I always do exercise, but nowadays I don't hardly watch TV now. Because I'm so busy doing my studies and everything. So when you're doing TV, watching TV, you can sit into uh, your OC chair, do your exercise, muscle, everything. It's very healthy, okay? Don't just sit and do nothing. It's very, very unhealthy. And if you're in a bad mood, go for a walk. Because that's the best thing. After 10 minutes walk, it boosts your energy, it boosts your brain, and you actually feel better for it. And you also uh, don't regret what you do, you know? Good nerve supply. Good nerve supply is because what? Your spine is straight. Now, I always tell people when you carry back, uh, carry handbag, ladies, don't carry like this. Because I notice everywhere I go all around the world, everybody like this. Don't do this. I'm carrying the same level. It doesn't drop off. It's how you position your back. It does not drop off. When I carry a backpack, I don't carry one side. I carry both sides. It's very important. Uh, I've ministered to many people and they have realized when they adjust, they have no aches and pain. No aches and pain. And when you are always texting on the laptop or uh, on your phone, don't do this. this. They call this a new condition called text neck. T-E-S-T. Neck. Because why? Your head weighs about 12 pounds. So you can imagine you off-center, pulling down, and it's stretching your neck unnecessarily. God gave me a vision of a lady who had a lot of neck pain. I don't know who the lady is, but I believe it's one of my church members. She works a lot on the computer all day long. She works a lot of vision. And she always complains of back trouble. And I was praying about this condition. God gave me a vision. But when you're stretching too much, sometimes my bone will break away because it overexerts. So bits fall away and it causes the damage. And that's why you have crooked spine, then you need to learn to do exercise. So these are some of the exercises that people can do to relax themselves, to help themselves, so that your body can heal. And when you are standing, sometimes you do this one exercise, up, down, up, down. I have an 81 year old man who went with us with his wife century, went to Nepal with us, and he was standing talking to us and he was doing this. He was doing his feet, you know, against the edge of the thing, and he was doing this. So I realized he was keeping himself at 81. Walk all the way to with us to the hall and uh, sleep with uh, three men in you know because it's a big room. Uh, he had to give his room up so I can sleep with his wife because I was the only one without a room. So we sh the men all shared together. <laughs> they snore all the time. I tell you, he keeps himself fit. So all these exercises are very gentle exercise. You don't have to do too much. Just repeat a few times. This will help your body more flexible. And this is strengthen your muscles. You know, this is called a cycling exercise. Huh? Uh, do all this. When you're sitting down, just push, just feel like you're gonna push the weight of this table. That will strengthen the muscles. And when you strengthen muscles in your arms, it does help. That you see? All this is a simple exercise. Stand straight and then you swing yourself. It's too very simple. It's it's not hard, a lot of hard work. No need money. No need to go to gym. Uh, you just have to make a strong will say, today I'm going to do some exercise. Sitting on chair strengthening, knee bends. Yeah? Uh, that's why sometimes my friend asks me, what are you doing? And you realize I'm doing my exercise because uh, I've been stiff, so I decided I'll do the exercise. You see, people who are sitting like this, their spine will actually go bird and the spine bent, and that's why they sometimes have weakened their leg so that when they walk, they have broken bones easily. I just had a pastor fell three months ago, August, sorry, August, that's more than three months, four months. It's still not quite huge. Right? Over the overweight, in the night he woke up, walked to the, it's a new place he really lived, and he fell and broke his hip, but he not be able to ask for the money. I tell you, so bad, I tell you. He weakened your lower back, everything. So you can see, yeah? the person, you know, it's all punch up, all the lungs punch up, it's not good. 
So when you're cluttered too much all day, learn to position yourself. So sometimes I do this, uh, stretch myself, you know, get my body to straighten out and I'll do some of these exercises. That sounds crazy, but it's actually stretching out your body properly. Because every nerve that's trapped is going to cause some sort of disease. That's why in my group of people that I know, most of us don't take medicine. We go to God to find out a good problem and start changing our lifestyle. And we change people here. So we pray for people, you know, like growing out legs because it actually it's not your leg, it's long shot. It's because your hip is in the wrong place. So one hip is higher, it pulls up the leg higher, and your body will this. I don't know whether you ever notice yourself look in the mirror. When you're talking, sometimes you like to stand one leg forward like this, or you look like this. I don't know whether you notice that. I don't. Because I train myself. After I started doing this healing ministry, I saw all this body. I said, God, I want to be fit for you. So God was teaching me. So we ministered to people about this. Um, we just recently, I just down with an old lady. She said, my whole body wants her ache so bad. So auntie, you sit crooked like a zigzag. She looked at me. She said, I know one shoulder is too high, but I said, your whole body is zigzag. So double zigzag. So I set her and she had one half inch difference. The hip has gone up. So we adjusted, she won't say, hey, I won't like no more tension. See, God heals. Very simple. But it must be a constant desire to change. How we sit, you know, we cross leg all the time, don't cross leg. Cross leg is very bad habit. I used to cross leg all the time. Now no more. Now I can tell myself, don't cross leg. And then I, I started with this healing when I first had back trouble. I had a back injury that has damaged several places on my spine because of a swim dog swim, swim in there. My body was whipped like this, uh, twisted. You know what happened? My back was so bad that for months I was bedridden. When I get out, it takes me an hour to get out of bed, just to dress everything. It takes ages, and when I get out, everything is swimming. The medication is to keep me functioning without too much pain and to be able to function normal. I felt it's horrible. Then I read about a doctor who did this sitting. So when I'm too tired, my back's too tired, I will do that. And I'll get my Bible out and read that way so that my body can go into relaxation. Because reading the Word of God is relaxing so that I don't have a crooked spine and damaged back. When you have a crooked spine and damaged back, your head also goes crooked. I can guarantee that. Because I'm ministering to a lot of people, yeah? And uh, it's very important. So, detoxation, the final thing. You must detox your body. You know, because the Bible says that for lack of knowledge, people. Perish. That word knowledge is progressive revelation. That means God will tell you things. Do something about it. Don't just, oh, never mind. Uh, it's so minor. Okay, that, that's very usual. Don't do that. So my church member telling me, Pastor, we don't know very well. We got used to it. I said, don't get used to everything. But certain things are not good for us. So you must deal with it. Go to your house. I don't hardly use any of this chemical stuff. I use a lot of Dixie stuff. You know, for Dixie. Uh, partly because all this chemical stuff, I find that I react quite a lot. So I change. I don't use, uh, when I buy fish, very particular, I don't just simply buy anything. When I go out overseas, you know, it's very difficult. So I always pray. Certain things I'll eat little, just for, just a show. But most of the time, I don't eat certain things. I come more and make up for it. So I'll take my chia seeds with me. This is a protein fiber. Everything I can, like in the house, we use lemon juice. Yeah? And uh, you know, you can use leftover food skin to make your enzyme. Very good for cleaning floor. We do it in our house uh, to remove stain. But sometimes, like dishes, you buy a little bit of liquid. You've got very heavy stain. Use the liquid from the washing up liquid. Wash your stain on your dress very instant, very fast. I carry stain jelly on a brand new blouse. You know? Somebody is French shape for me at a funeral. Let's clean it come on. Have a steam bath every now again to clean out your pores. Or you have dry skin, you have a dry blue fire, you know those uh, dry, like if you come with it and dry and then rub it with some Some indoor plants. One of the indoor plants is spider plant. Very good. Uh, ornamental spider plant, the one with green plant with a lot of stain hanging out with blue white flower. That's not spider plant. Uh, it's, like, uh, it's very good. 
Avoid rock music, heavy metal and rock music. It's very bad for your health. It breaks up the water molecules in your body and it messes up. So if your children are, are playing those music, you pray for them to really be disgusted with it and they will go on. The same as some good music. Now for rock music are Beethoven music, um, uh, uh, Mozart music, they are very very good in the Middle Ages, they are all Christians. And your thought life, it says what? Think things are true, honest, right, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, graceful. Think of those thoughts. Use as little cosmetic as possible if you can, because at the end of the day, everything is going to affect you. And finally, always go back to the Lord. Because each of us are different. Because we are different, we need God to tell us what to do. Uh, I, I'm very thankful to God that uh, I'm still learning about nutrition because nutrition has changed a lot since the day when I was a student. I was studying home economics, so nutrition is part of my course. But I also study chemistry with my nutrition, and now I understand things better. Now, everything in the Bible is now coming to pass. Scientists have found out that everything it says in the Bible has no meaning at one time. They're all explaining. For example, in the Isaiah 55, I, I forgot to bring my Bible with me. Isaiah 55, he says what? Come, all those who are thirsty, come and drink milk. Yeah, it's free. He's talking about the word. The word of God is milk. Drink water. The word of God is water. Then at the end, he says what? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than God's. God's way is always higher than ours. His principles of things are higher. So we always go back to God. Why? Because it's going to show us things that we have never seen, never heard, or never even believed in our heart possible. That's what God wants. Because if you can have His thoughts, that's why you got to pray in the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit gives you thoughts. Now, most of my lesson is prepared for thoughts. The Holy Spirit says, Oh, do you remember? You so and so teach you about this. I want to put this in. That's how I make my slides of teaching. So that you understand what God is saying to each person. So every time I go to an place, things may change a bit because different combinations, different persons, God speak. So you need to hear from God, each of you. If you don't hear from God, you don't get answers. So you may be practicing, oh, so and so do this, it work. So it must work for me, it does not work that way. Now we say that God wants us to work divine health, doesn't mean we don't do anything. We must do something. In Matthew, it says that the kingdom of God is taken by force. So if you want the kingdom of God to manifest this year in your life, you must take it by force. That means you have to be aggressive. You say by the strength of Jesus, healing is already done. You're already healed. But many people walk around sick. Why? Because they didn't enforce that word, that truth, into their body. So for example, if you have a tumor growing, so you say, tumor, I command you to submit to the word of God rather than to the word of God in Psalm 114 verse 78. It says that the the, the Lord will shake this body, earth is the body, shake it so that the tumor, the rock, will turn into water. Because of my body comes to That's what we do. The Bible said the fat belongs to the Lord. So I actually in the shower. I said, Lord, I praise you, the fat belongs to you, Lord. So in Jesus' name, I command this fat that I don't need to burn and melt off. That's how I'm losing. And God said, I want to change your diet in this area of change. The last few days, you know. Uh, because of different uh, uh, parties and you know, Christmas thing and all that. We eat so much meat, because everywhere I go is meat. And yesterday I just dumped a lot of vegetables. I ate salad, I think I ate salad three times yesterday with my friend. She said she had never eaten so healthy. For three days she stayed with me to get everything healthy. First time. Just eat too much meat. She said, I really feel different today. Mind more alert. Okay? So you need to hear God. Ask God. Ask God, what do I change? So if God speak to you, say that you need to cut down on meat, cut down because it's very difficult to cut down on meat. Actually, we are vegetarian or vegetarian. But because of sin, God slaughtered the animal, and there was a first kill of the animal. And then we start eating meat. So our body adjusts to it. But don't go to the other extreme. Don't eat sausages, it's garbage. Which is every meat, every piece of the tissue that nobody wants, put it inside, then they put ammonia to kill off the germs. Then they wash it off, so take away the flavor, no natural flavor, then they put new flavor, chemical in. So what you're eating is full of chemical. So I don't eat this sort of food. So I tell my children, why you eat something? Oh mom, the, the picture didn't 
Say go for a picture that makes me right from South India. You know, go be the change of color. Change. When I have quite a bit of money to spend, I eat very quickly. If not, I eat very simply. It was somebody. That's why I'm fit and healthy. It can be. I don't spend money on I don't see doctors. I only go for medical checkup every now and then. But I think it's time to go, I'll go. <coughs> or else I don't bother. I don't go like everybody must go on this day, this year. I don't. So learn to keep up. Then you don't get stressed. But today, I couldn't get home. You just couldn't get home of boy. So the pastor's wife said, you have to put the taxi. And she left. Everybody's car gone. And I said, Lord, I have no taxi down here. I saw the real life. Where do I? Lord, what to do? And the thought came. I called my friend. My friend's so busy. So she didn't reply. So I said, Lord, do something, Lord, because I need to be there on time. I don't like to be late. And then I heard a car come in. The pastor's daughter, the younger daughter, the just came home later than I See, what's the matter? I've already eaten my lunch. I think, what do you want? I said, I need to be here. So she brought me, and she missed the turning, so we made one big round. Or else we should be here 10 minutes before. See, when did it come to? See, God, now we take care. I don't get stressed. So people say, why not? Why aren't you getting worried? I said, no. Because I know what God's going to do. But when I get anxious, that's why I make mistakes. So learn to calm down. So Lord, I rest in your cast this care in your hand. You organize it for me and God has everything. I find God is so amazing. The more I learn to trust Him, the more I gain Him, the more I get something. So this is what you have to do. Do it every day and get in the habit. It takes 21 days, by the way, to get in a good habit. So tell yourself, well, today I will not do this. Today I'm going to do this. So speak over your body. Say, Today, I'm going to be a wiser woman, I'm going to be calmer, I'm going to put my trust in God, and every day, I'm going to see God manifest Himself in my life. They have breakthrough. Just to